now we're going to uh, actually begin working on the chassis. And you can see here this is uh, the chassis that came with the uh, Weber kit that we picked for this particular amplifier. It's got all the holes pre-drilled that we need. And here you're going to see me uh, mount it into the chassis. You just want a nice tight fit there. Then you can put the uh, sled in place there. Remember those two screws. Go ahead and tighten those up so that we'll hold the chassis in place. And now get it where it's uh, comfortable for you. And we're just going to start to install the hardware. Now here we have the front of the amplifier, the front of the chassis. And we're just going to double check these holes and make sure that the face plates line up and match. And make sure that each one of those is what it's supposed to be and that they do line up, that your pilot light hole matches. And just do a little test fit, make sure that every, anything's not uh, out of line. And do the same thing with the uh, face plate on the back. Now on the front where all your pots go, there's typically a brass plate that goes underneath that face plate. You want to test it in there as well. And then uh, I've got, I've just kind of put all my hardware in a bag here, but just go through and identify each piece and start putting them in place. Just work your way down the line. Just double check you've got the right pot values in the right spots. And you don't really want to tighten these down all the way. You just want to get them in place. You may have to move them according to the wiring inside later on. Here I'm just going to transfer to the back. Do the same thing with the back. And then we're going to move on and take our uh, tube sockets. Make sure you've got the screws for those and the rings. And we'll install those in place. This particular amp um, also has some little nylon spacers for it. But it's got a, a rectifier, two power tubes, and then six smaller tubes. But you'll notice the holes on those. But these are pretty straightforward. They just fit in. And there should be two little holes drilled for the machine screws. The real thing you want to watch here is to make sure you know where the number one pin is. You can see here I've got one of the tubes. And it's hard to see here. I can't really get a good focus that close. Um, but the number one pin is right there. And it, that notch is going to match up to tell you where that's at. There's a little notch on the tube. And that one pin, um, where the notch is, and then you usually read it sort of in a counterclockwise fashion there. But make sure you know where that notch is and where it needs to be positioned uh, relative to the chassis to make it uh, the easiest to wire. And you can tell that from your layout. See, when I put it in, I know by the layout where I want that uh, to be, and I'm going to line it up accordingly. And these, uh, you can see here where it's kind of handy to have the uh, chassis almost up, straight up and down. So that you can get kind of both hands around it and put those little machine screws in place. And there we have it in with the little uh, tube clamp on it as well. And you want to do this for the other two and then the smaller uh, six. And they actually work uh, very much the same way where you want to identify your notch or the number one pin and make sure you've got it turned uh, where it needs to be according to the layout and do all six the same way and here you can see that they're in place so I've got the uh, two power tubes and the tube for the rectifier 
and all of those are in and all of our basically all the hardware on the chassis is in um, except for the power transformers and here we're going to start to install that um, you know these things have got some uh, mounting posts usually in the corners like this just go ahead and take the nuts off of those and remember these are pretty heavy so just be sure you've got a good handle on them just feed your wires in and you kind of want to make sure you've got the wires in the right place you know I've got like my in output wires here and these are my inputs they're going to go toward the uh, power supply that's in the back of the chassis so I'm going to have the transformer turned to where those face that it makes it a little easier to wire and then go ahead and put um, the other transformers in the same way it has a little choke you see it's just got the two little wires but there's also a little grommet hole there um, for those wires and then there's the output transformer um, you can see there that's the output or here are the input wires and these are the output going to the speakers and you kind of want to line this up with the holes that are drilled and make it to where your output is on the speaker side closer uh, to that side and same thing with the power and then in between those uh, six little um, those six little smaller tubes that's where the reverb uh, transformer goes it's got a little grommet for the wires to go through there and then you'll mount that the same and you'll also see that's the cover uh, just a nice chrome cover for the uh, power board that will sit on top here the power capacitors are separate from the circuit board and they actually sit on top of the chassis or I guess you could call it the bottom um, but outside with the tubes so get everything there in the hardware mounted and now these uh, this top area with the tubes and everything tighten those up those are going to be in place permanently you can see here we've got the wiring going through our grommet same thing there and then you've got all your transformers another little grommet in between there note also your power transformers are always on the opposite end from where the inputs are from the instrument 